It's the Behind the Book Sports Series brought to you by the Play MGM app. Gil Alexander from the Vegas Stats and Information Network, not with the Vice President of Race and Sports at MGM Resorts International, Jay Rude. Jay is off doing vice presidential things this week, but in his stead, ably in his stead, we have the Mirage Sportsbook Director, Jeff Stone, back here today. Thanks for doing this, Jeff. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You ready to do this? Let's do it. One college football game, three pro, as always, the college game, Wisconsin at Michigan, and in the pros, great game between the Rams and Minnesota at Minnesota, as well as Dallas hosting the Eagles on Sunday night, and then, of course, Monday night football, Atlanta at Seattle. We tackle it all, and pretenders and contenders in the NFL as well on this week's edition of Behind the Book. College football time live here from the beautiful Mirage Sportsbook in Las Vegas with the Sportsbook Director at the Mirage here, Jeff Stoneback, in for Jay Rude today. I'm Gil Alexander, Michigan, Wisconsin, the one real big game in college football this weekend. We were spoiled by a great college football week last weekend. That's the more key game. Wisconsin opens as a 10-point favorite, Jeff. Now it's seven and a half. Big move. Yeah, a lot of money on Michigan. Uh, Michigan won this game last year in a slugfest, 14 to seven. Uh, I expect it's going to be a defensive battle again this year, so uh, 10 points is a premium in a big, uh, low-scoring uh, game. Uh, this total is going to be 40, so 40. expect a lot, uh, just like last year, expect a lot of the same game. Very low total, uh, not up yet, but perhaps 40 when it gets released. Uh, Michigan, two-loss team this year, but the two games they have lost, Penn State ran all over them, 224 yards. Michigan State gained 158 on them. And conversely, take a team like Iowa, who ran all over Ohio State. They play Wisconsin. Wisconsin holds them, Iowa that is, to 25 yards on the ground, 41 through the air. At least through those stats, it looks like Wisconsin should get it done here. But. But, like you said, there's been a lot of money on Michigan, sharp money, and uh, yeah. expect some more money to come in on Michigan. On Saturday, I would not be surprised if this line closes at 7. I think there's still more money out there on Michigan, and uh, it's, it's going to be coming in this weekend. Should get to 7. I would imagine that's probably right. Probably ends right there and stays on 7. Yeah, it won't go any lower than 7. Yeah, it won't uh, go through the key number. Um, Early game, Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. Yeah, like we were talking, that, that's the biggest upset of the whole day right there, that uh, this game goes at 9. This should be the primetime game at 5 o'clock. Uh, why it's not, I don't know, but uh, it's the only good game on the board uh, this week, and uh, uh, it'll be over by noon. If you want to bet on the Michigan Wolverines, better get there quick with 7 in the hook. Otherwise, as Jeff points out, might be 7 by kickoff. Maybe the best game on the Week 11 NFL slate is a day game between the Vikings and the Rams. Vikings, 7-2, two, two-point favorites at home against the 7-2 LA Rams. Two teams in the NFL that have really surprised a lot of people. The Vikings will go with Case Keenum once again, at least for the start of this game. Teddy Bridgewater will sit. And the Rams, Jared Goff all the way. They've been doing great. This is two now. It was at one and a half. Some shenanigans behind the desk about how you guys opened this number, where you were expecting money to go? Well, we've been taking a lot of Ram money the last few weeks. They've become a, a public team. So we uh, hung this a little light, uh, one and a half on the Vikings, hoping to get a little money on the Vikings, anticipating some uh, public money on the weekends on the Rams. And uh, that's what we did. We took uh, a sharp uh, play at minus one and a half, and we're at two right now. Interesting. So, so, so let me try to put that in layman's terms. So you guys get a lot of Rams money. They've become a somewhat public team. The public loves the Rams. A lot of offense usually makes people love a team like that. In anticipation of that, what you did is try to entice Vikings money by putting that number below three and hoping that then people would say, oh my goodness, I have to bet on the Vikings, which they have at least to two. But what you're saying now, based on what you're saying with ticket count and stuff, that it might just stop it too? Yeah, it looks like two might be the number. Uh, you throw out that one play that we took uh, from the uh, professional, and uh, we've written $100 more on the uh, uh, Rams. And the parlays, which is a key uh, uh, factor, is that there's been $2 more written on the Rams. Mm. So, But, uh, yeah, we try to line ourselves up, get a little bit of money on the side that uh, 
the uh, public is uh, going to go against, and uh, that's what we've done this week with the Rams. So ultimately, you won't necessarily need one of these teams for a big decision. Sounds like you've got this pretty... Well, let's hope not. If we've done our job correctly, yeah. uh, we won't. Uh, but a lot of times that uh, public money can overwhelm the sharp money by a, a great margin. So yeah. uh, we got to be careful. From a fan's perspective, great, great football game. And from a betting perspective, uh, a big decision for you, Minnesota laying just two points. Is that tempting enough, or do you love the Rams offense? The Rams at Minnesota, the marquee game this weekend in the NFL. Come down, if you're in Vegas, to the beautiful Mirage Sportsbook to Bennett or any of the MGM properties. Rams, right now, two-point dogs at Minnesota. Pretenders and contenders time right here on Behind the Book. Last week, we did college football. This week, professional football. Jeff Stoneback in for Jay Rude. Jeff, uh, let's talk first one AFC team, the Kansas City Chiefs, 10-1 to 1 to win it all. They have well, a pretty light schedule when you look at some of these games in the remaining seven. Giants, Bills, Jets, Dolphins, and Broncos all would appear on paper to be very winnable. Value on the 10-1 to 1 for the Chiefs to win it all? What do you think? I think it's a good value. Uh, they're a, a definite contender. Their uh, the AFC is a little weak. And it's just uh, Pittsburgh and New England, so I say contender. Contender. Let's take some 10 to 1s in the NFC. Seahawks, Saints, and Rams all at 10 to 1. Which of that bunch contender? Which pretender, in your opinion? Uh, very big contender is the Saints. Uh, I would agree. Saints probably the best team right now in the NFC. I hate to say it being from Seattle, but to the Seahawks, uh, pretender. Really? Yeah, inconsistent offense, no running game at all, a team that relies on their defense, and now they lose Richard Sherman. They do. So that turns them into a pretender. Richard Sherman with the ruptured Achilles out for the season. And some bigger long shots, the Vikings at 15-1, to 1, the Falcons and the Cowboys at 18-1. to 1. Well, with the Cowboys, I say uh, pretender. No Ezekiel Elliott for uh, six games. Uh, I don't think they'll make it uh, up into the playoffs without him. Um, and the Vikings, I think uh, this weekend will show a lot when they play the Rams. Uh, so, but right now, I would have to say that they're a contender. Okay. What I got out of that, more than anything, Saints, big time contender. Saints, big time contender. And Ezekiel Elliott dropping his appeal of his suspension. So he will be out now for the duration of the six week suspension. Sunday night football time right here on Behind the Book. Gil Alexander from VSIN, Jeff Stoneback, the sports book director here at the beautiful Mirage Sportsbook here on the Las Vegas Strip. Philadelphia at Dallas Sunday night. Now, back in the day when you had an NFC East matchup like this, there was sort of a default minus three to the home team. Uh, not only is that not the case here in the post Ezekiel Elliott Dallas Cowboys world, but the Eagles on the road, not even three point favorites, but three and a half. Talk to me about that. Well, actually that's been bet up. Uh, they were a, a, a three point favorite at a lot of places. We hung this at three and a half, three and a half even actually. And uh, that game has gone to three and a half flat now. So we've taken quite a bit of money right now on the Eagles. And uh, that number is headed to four by Sunday. Really? Yes. Uh, so to me, this is an injury report game. Now I get Ezekiel Elliott and Ezekiel Elliott dropping any appeal of the suspension. So he will be out six weeks for the Cowboys. Sorry, Cowboys fans on that. But that game last week where the Cowboys got beaten by the Atlanta Falcons, it was less to me about Ezekiel Elliott than it was about the fact that the Cowboys lost their starting left tackle, Tyron Smith. He didn't play. Their backup, Chaz Green, giving up six sacks to Adrian Claiborne of the Falcons, one shy of the NFL record. They just got toasted because of that. Sean Lee standout linebacker, had a hamstring injury. They will probably have Sean Lee back this week. He's already been practicing. Tyron Smith has not practiced yet, but it would seem to me that if I look at an injury report later this week and he's practicing, give me the three and a half all day. Well, the last thing I saw, it looked like Smith may not play. Right. I saw that's that a little thing. while ago, you know, and that's a big factor. And like I said, the public, uh, they know what happened in the last game, and all they see is uh, them getting blown out by Atlanta next week. So uh, if you like uh, the three and a half, even if Smith plays, hold on. You're going to probably get four. Even if Smith plays, you give me four yes. at home. Dak Prescott, give me those points. But again, Tyron Smith, a big difference maker. And uh, if he is a not a go, I should say, then I get the spread completely. Three and a half and four. Total at 47 and a half. Any movement on that? No, no movement on the total yet. Uh, All right. But I'm sure uh, just like every Sunday night game, uh, that game will go over. That It'll be favorite and over just like every Sunday night as and, far as the betting public. And that'll be your biggest decision of the week probably? Th uh, that game will be the biggest decision of the week, yeah. Everything will be rolling into that game, all the parlays. 
And right now, you would need very rare circumstance where you'll need the Dallas Cowboys based yeah. on the movement. Um, that uh, doesn't happen too often for us, and uh, let's hope it works out well for us this week. All right, Eagles, three and a half point favorites on the road against the Cowboys should be great. Sunday night football. Behind the book, live from the beautiful Mirage here on the Las Vegas Strip, the Mirage Sportsbook director kind enough to join us today in lieu of Jay Rude, Jeff Stoneback. Give us the biggest reason why folks should come down to the Mirage and make their bets here when in the desert. Well, we've got the biggest screens around, and uh, we've got uh, couches you can lounge on. Nice couches. Uh, get these couches, and all you can drink, uh, you pay a nominal fee, and uh, <laughs> what more could you ask for? All you can drink if you pay a nominal fee, but it is a nominal fee. That's right. Uh, but it is beautiful down here at the Mirage. All the MGM books are nice, but since you are the Mirage Sportsbook Director, let's give the Mirage the love it deserves. And it is beautiful. Biggest screens in town. Yeah, and the atmosphere is great here. I mean, yeah. uh, every uh, weekend, this place is jumping, uh, uh, standing room only. It's People come up and say, tell us all the time this is the best sports book in town. And cool. I agree, I, and I work here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you do. And if you want to come down Monday night, you'll see Atlanta at Seattle. Atlanta coming off that big win over the Cowboys to get themselves to 5-4. and four. Seattle on extra rest here. They beat the Cardinals last Thursday night, lost Richard Sherman in the process. Seattle a three-point favorite here against the Falcons. How do you feel about this one? Yeah, well, we actually uh, opened this up. Uh, Seattle is a three-point favorite. It's now minus three even money. So we have taken mm. uh, a, a sharp play on the Falcons. Like I said, Julio Jones and uh, Matt Ryan going against a, a Seahawk defense without possibly Earl Thomas and definitely without uh, Richard Sherman. So it's a big test for both teams and a must win for uh, Atlanta. I mean, if they lose, they're two games behind uh, Seattle and Carolina in that wild card race. So finally we get a nice uh, Monday night game also, so it should be good. Yeah, Earl Thomas, it looks like, will play. Cam Chancellor might not play with a stinger. Another big reason for the Seahawks' success with the Legion of Boom. Three, reduced juice. Do you see it coming off the three, though? I could see it. Uh, a lot of people, uh, when Seattle plays in a primetime uh, game, uh, they think it's free money. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> that uh, home field advantage gets uh, added uh, even a little bit more when it's prime time. So we should be taking some Seattle money this week. And uh, um, I should, uh, that game may go off at Seattle minus three, minus 20. Okay. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, three point favorites against the Atlanta Falcons. A good, finally, a good prime time game from the National Football League. The Behind the Book Sports Betting Series. Gil Alexander from the Vegas Stats and Information Network. Jeff Stoneback, the director here at the Mirage Sportsbook. And of course, it's all brought to you by the Play MGM app. When you're in Nevada, when you're down here on the Strip, get the app, sign up for it. Easier to make your bets wherever you want to make them. Avoid the lines here at the book. Avoid the lines, much, much larger menu. Uh, you can bet the games, all the uh, pro sports. They've got uh, in running. You can bet it while it's going on. You can sit down, have dinner, and make a bet while the game's going on. And completely easy to use, right? Very Be seamless. Very easy. Even an old guy like me can uh, work that thing. Even an old guy like <laughs> Jeff. It's not that old. Here are the things I'll be looking at. Week 11 in the NFL, though, stats-wise, Andy Reid, 16-2. and two. Jeff coming off a bye in his 18 years as an NFL head coach. Those 18 years, of course, split between the Chiefs and the Eagles. Now, the Chiefs, 10.5-point favorites at the Giants this weekend, so the straight-up stat doesn't necessarily apply specifically, but it does inform us of how well Andy Reid prepares when given extra time for a game. And the other thing, New England and Oakland playing in Mexico City at Estadio Azteca Stadium. That sits at an elevation of 7,280 feet. The Patriots, in their infinite wisdom, after the game against the Broncos in elevation in Colorado, they're practicing at the Air Force Academy. That has an elevation of 6,621 feet all to acclimate themselves to the altitude. We'll see if that manifests in a game in Mexico City where the Patriots are six and a half point favorites against the Raiders. What will you be looking at? Uh, actually, we'll be watching a couple of those games that you just mentioned. Uh, the Chiefs, we've got a lot of large pa uh, parlay liability already on them. They're playing the Giants. It's, uh, the Jaguars, they're playing the Browns. It's more of a bet against the Browns <laughs> than it is on the Jaguars. And the Patriots, uh, we've got uh, a ton of uh, parlays on them already, and it's all rolling into uh, the Sunday night game. So if all three of those teams hit, uh, we may have to be doing some maneuvering for that 5:30 game. It could get ugly for us. Those were awfully public teams, awfully square plays, as they say. But sometimes 
they come in. Well, that's what's happened in the last few weeks. The public has done very well, and uh, they've got a pocket full of money, and uh, they've been up to the counter betting those teams again this week. Pocket full of money, ready to reinvest, as they say. And by the way, last year, right around this time, this is what happened for the rest of the season. You needed the Browns every week. Yes. It never came through. I've been in the business for 30 years. This was the, the from this time on until the, the college uh, uh, playoff championship, it was the worst time in, uh, for the books as all in the 30 years I've been in the business. We shall see if history repeats itself. As always, Behind the Book brought to you by Play MGM. The app that is for Jay Rude, who's not here, Jeff Stoneback kindly sitting in. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks the for having sports me. Sports book director here at the Mirage, Gil Alexander from Veasan. Thanks for joining us on Behind the Book. Good luck with all your Week 11 bets in the NFL and in college football.